Hello, Commanders. Welcome to another day in Star Trek Fleet Command. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, this is Grand Admiral Hunter here, and I wanted to put out a video today. I've had a... <laughs> since we're on break uh, between arcs, I have been trying to catch up on some of the videos that either I wanted to do or players have requested for me to do. Um, some of my alliance had asked for a couple. Um, kind of more geared toward some of the basics of the game, and so I thought I'll try and put out that video, um, kind of the main purpose of the one today, and and then we may see uh, what time I have. If I can put out some more, that, that can be helpful. So when we're talking about uh, what I want to talk about today is some basics in the game, and if you are a veteran player, this may not be as helpful, but it's, it's good to kind of have different things that can benefit different players. And in fact, I had a question about uh, something called synergy in the game that... Uh, uh, it's really important to know, so I'm going to talk about that uh, a little bit today and add that little piece to the video as well. So let's get into it. Just a reminder, if you're new or haven't subscribed yet, uh, if you subscribe to the channel, it's a really big help to help the channel grow. Also hitting that thumbs up, um, the like, and as well um, hitting the bell notification so you are kept in the loop when I re release new content. So, yeah, feel free to do all of that. Really appreciate the support. Um, couldn't do this without all of you, and I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's hop into it. want to open up. Let's maybe swap this ship. I don't know, something. This has a lot of slots, but I want to open up a ship, and we're talking about a couple of different things here, Okay. So I'm going to take off my below deck, if it will let me, without me clicking wrong, so it brings up everything there. That's probably pretty good to get what I want to show you here. Okay, so if we pull up the ship details here, I want to click on a couple of things here to talk through some of the... First off, we're going to talk about the ship bonuses. So you've got your attack, defense, and health, and what they do. <clears throat> so, probably the two most important stats on your ship, if you can't meet the ship percentages, is the attack and health. Attack, like it sounds like, is going to increase your damage per round. have a little uh, note here. Your officers provide an attack bonus 405%. This is huge. When you can meet your ship bonus percentages, if you see 28,613... See if I take him off. I need to put someone lower on. So we can see the change there. Let's find someone that's not on a ship. What would we do, McKenna? Yep, no percentages. So we're not getting any because of the stats of the officer. If we go back here. Your officers provide an attack bonus of 0%, 443. So you can see the big difference there as if we put on Khan and he's getting the 450% just by himself, like we had before, we get a much different percentage. So you're going to have a huge attack bonus if you can meet your ship's percentages. And one thing I will note and recommend highly that you look and, and, and always work on your officers because the higher grade of ship you have, whether that's tier two, three, four, five, I haven't seen six, but I assume it's the same, <clears throat> that's going to get harder and harder to meet those ship bonuses, okay? And so you always want to be working on your officers to meet those bonuses. So attack, that's pretty explanatory there. Let's get defense for just a minute and let's talk about health. So with this, we can see this going to help with your hull and shield health. Your officer provides, I think it should say officers, provide a health bonus of 404%, which is 4.4 million hull health, and it looks like 3.3 million shield health. Now, if we go back here and see I'm not quite meeting it, that's why it's the 405%. 
So you want to be able to meet that so you can last longer in combat. So as you hit hostiles, your shields can take more of a beating without it getting to your whole health, things like that, okay? So those are probably the two most important things. And why I say that is we need to take a look now at the defense. <coughs> okay. Against a hostile level of 55, your armor, shield, and dodge will result in mitigation of 64.5% standard damage. And so if we look here, it says your officers provide a defense bonus of 225%. Zero armor, zero shield, and 138,805 dodge. So what does this mean? Well, if you remember, you're going to have battleships that their primary defensive ability is their armor. Explorers is going to be your shields, and interceptors, like, like this ship is right here, <coughs> is dodge. So your basic um, mitigation stats are going to come through your defense. So why this isn't quite as important <clears throat> is there's officers with abilities uh, either on your bridge or below decks that can significantly impact your, your mitigation depending upon how high level hostile you're hitting, um, what kind of level of officer you have. For example, you'll add him below deck. Uh, come on, there we go. But Tom Paris is a great example of someone below decks that provides, increases your armor, shield deflection, and dodge. So it depends on the type of ship you're on, right? Armor, once again, battleship, shield deflection if you're on an explorer, dodge, by 250% of defense at the start of combat. So that's gonna be the total defense of your ship, okay? So if, for example, we just added tons of defense if we only had two slots, say, I my, my officers are good enough to get my defense up to 52,000. But if I really want to just add as many slots as I had below deck, I can get that number up to 164. And eh, let's just, this wouldn't be the best crew, but just showing more numbers, um, I get up to 228,000. And so the key here is you want to fill your above deck or your bridge crew. And then you want to add enough officers below deck to meet your, your ship bonuses, because these are massive, these are huge. They'll add a huge amount to your damage that you do for attack, holding shield health for health, and then defense, right? So those are gonna be really significant. So I highly recommend when you're crewing your ships that you do exactly like that, that you add your bridge crew, and then you add your below deck officers to the point you're meeting your bonuses and then look at your um, your bridge crew. Because some of their abilities are going to depend upon stats you have in total on your ship. And so that's why getting your ship leveled up. And, and I would say that your ship ships tend to start to become effective at tier five. Tier seven seems like, um, where you're starting to get enough below deck abilities or, or sorry, slots so that you can add more officers to really do well. Somewhere around seven or nine possibly is where your ship can really start to excel in PVP because of the below deck slots that you are able to add uh, more stats, right? Okay, so a typical example, if we talk about the Trinity and when we talk about the Trinity, there's three officers that depend upon stats. One is Kang. And he, yeah, he still has benefits and, and things in the game. <clears throat> but as an, uh, his officer ability, and my, my officers are max, so yours may be different, but the start of Battle King increases the accuracy of the ship. So he's going to increase accuracy, which helps overcome dodge of interceptors. So that's where he is important. You have Marcus, Alexander Marcus. They increases the shield piercing of the ship by 1600% of the defense of the crew on the ship. I forgot to emphasize that King is the attack of the crew on the ship. And then who else did we have? I think it's Charvenet. Dang it. I can't put her on the bridge, but I can at least pull up her stat. She's on the way team mission at the moment, getting me some ROM credits. At the start of combat, she increases the armor piercing. So 
based upon the health of the crew on the ship. And so really, it just depends on your situation, what you're trying to do. But those are three classic examples. There's a number of other officers in the game that it's based upon the level of your of your officer. So once again, always emphasizing working on your officers. But truly, you want to meet your ship bonuses. And then after you've done that, then start filling in with officers you have. And that's one of the reasons why I really like this sort feature. I, I can choose attack, defense, or health. And I can find the officers that have those abilities. Okay, so that's the basics there. Feel free to drop any questions below or hit me up on Discord. I'm happy to help answer your questions because it's tough to make a video for every single scenario, but that's the basics of crewing your ship. Now, one more thing to talk about, and that is synergy. So each, let me do this, and I'll do group. Each group, if you see this little yellow thunderbolt sim symbol, and you sort by group, each captain, or each officer, let's say, has a captain. Well, we should say not all officers, because some are not fit to lead, so they don't have a captain's ability, but a lot of officers do. So in this case, uh, 511 has a captain's ability, Increases the shield deflection, armor dodge, so it's going to increase your mitigation by its total health of the officers on the ship. So we talked about that a little bit, where it's based upon the health. Well, if you add officers to the bridge, that 400%, see how there's the double bars right there? That means you're getting max synergy from that officer. And typically, you're going to have it if you have officers that are of different classes. So think about command officers, science officers, that kind of thing. Okay, If I put three different types, I should get max synergy. In this case, they're adding 400 plus 400, which is 800, plus the standard 200 of the captain's ability. So because we have max synergy with the double bars on both sides, we're getting a total of 800 plus 200, so it's 1,000. Now, if you see here... Oops, that's not the right one. It's still 200%. That's because I haven't confirmed it yet, so it doesn't quite work. But there we go. So after I confirm the officers, 1,000%. So that's how you increase the captain's ability. The only way to increase the officer ability is by um, leveling or promoting, I should say, your officers. Okay, so what happens if we go back here and we hit group, and we put the same officer. So let's say I put seven over here. We're not going to get full synergy. See, it has the one bar, 200%. Um, and it all depends. The question I got in Discord today from, from one person on the Discord is, how are you getting, how can you get it so that it's always at these 100%? Well, it's all based upon the ability of the officers. So, for example, this one is increasing your your mitigation by health of the officers. If we, it just depends upon the ability of the captain, right? So if we go here, just for example, and this is a quirky one, that's why I wanted to share this one. But let's see here, Chakotay is also of the same class as Captain Janeway, he gives 7%. Look, single bar, 7%, double bar, 7%. That's weird, why does it work that way? Well, that's just because of how they have programmed the officer. And this is the main one I can think of at the top of my head. I can't think of others that have this unique uh, situation here. But with Janeway, Captain Ability, when you take hull damage, Janeway has 6% that she adds. But then the two officers adding 7 and 7, so 14 you get 20% increasing your 20% shield mitigation, which is normally 80% um, shield mitigation, 20% goes to hull. But once Janeway triggers and you have full synergy, you're then gonna take zero damage. Now your shields are gonna take more damage, but that's just how Janeway works. So you have to make sure you have enough shield health to keep you going. Now, one thing you can do is you can hop over into stfc.space for example, if we go down here, I've already pulled up a couple, pull up Janeway. If we go down to the bottom, 
you can see every single Voyager officer at 7% synergy. Doesn't matter if they're an engineer, if they're a command officer, whatever it is, they're all going to add 7%. If we go over to 5 of 11, like we were just looking at, so it's going to be different depending upon the officer. We have a lot of 400s here, 200, 200, 200. So that's something to keep in mind when you're trying to boost your captain's ability is it depends upon the officer, but as one way that you can look it up. Um, last thing that I will mention really quick that I've done another video about, and that is getting officers. And when you're early on in the game, um, found a couple things that you can do is as you are doing your dailies, and I, and I would recommend doing this early on in the game, but start spending, even if it's just a little bit each day, on your faction recruits. So these, as you level up, you'll get better options or more options as you go through here. Um, I really like this one when I had hit my first lock, uh, getting 3,000 for 300. But what you can do is as you're getting these and as you're spending those, as you get into, not faction, sorry, we're just in there. As you go into officers and recruit, as you have those recruit tokens, and I've saved up quite a few of um, 86,000 there. If I do a poll, because I've matched the shards for all of these officers, what we're gonna see is that for the green ones, we get officer XP. For rare and above, you get these transporter patterns, and those are really valuable for those who don't know. Whoops, let's go back to recruit. Is you can hop over here to the right of all these ready to recruit options, and all these you can change these these TPs, transporter patterns, or as some people call them pinks or pinkies. <laughs> you can trade them for officer shards. So I have quite a few. <laughs> Mostly because I just don't see a lot in value and I'm trying to save them for something that's going to come along. Hopefully they'll release really something that is really valuable, valuable to me. So you can also get one other thing to mention. You can also use your standard recruit tokens that you earn through doing dailies and whatnot. But you can also buy these with Latinum. If you have a lot of extra Latinum, you can actually spend that here to get these recruit tokens here. So um, just another option uh, for you as you're trying to kind of max out things and start to get the officers that you need. But I would say always work on your officers because you're going to need to have stronger and stronger officers as you progress throughout the game. So that's it for the introductionary video today. Hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully it's a refresher for some, but hopefully it helps some of you who maybe are mid to, mid to lower level players to help you understand how, how to organize crewing your ships, what's important to look at, and as you are putting crews together, uh, paying attention to synergy because that can really impact the effectiveness of your captain's maneuver. It's interesting. Um, used to be that we we always had to pay attention to synergy and we're always maxing synergy or or having at least one officer that had max synergy with the captain but we've come out with certain different crews that even though they don't have max synergy scopely has been creative with their hostels in a way that we've had to get creative and even if there wasn't synergy sometimes there was a combination that worked better because of the many different officer abilities that have been in the game and they're trying to craft hostels in a way to to combat those so anyway just kind of interesting stuff it's kind of fun frustrating for some players and uh we try and help out where we can this channel with crew combinations that we figured out i figured out or i've learned from the community and want to share to make sure it gets out to everyone so anyways hopefully this video is helpful thanks so much and we will see you next time